happy Wednesday everybody and uh, here we are once again in the KV thing right then so tonight we've got Mr. Graham Gord's 1001 into whistle coming along with his uh, his mods of boxing and that sort of thing that he does um, and I've got a review as well in the latter half of the show so uh, okay let's do the titles and uh, what we'll do straight off the titles we'll run some VT from uh, Graham Gord's and then we'll be having a live chat with him so uh, See you in a minute. Joytech UK are proud sponsors of VapeTrails.tv. Hi guys, right I've got a little bit of time now and uh, I'm just sort of going to explain a little bit of what I'm working on. Um, a lot of you know that I mess around with cells and lipo packs and do a bit of testing and sort of try and look at the more technical side of what we do as vapors and as cloud chasers. It's also no secret that Personally, I find that a lot of power works for me. Now, what I've done is I have run max down to silly resistances and I've done my tests. I've been down to about 0 0.06. And what I find is that lithium iron cells just can't take it. They just sag down to 2.8 volts, which is below what you should be going to at all and you're risking damaging your cells so I don't believe it's a sensible thing to be doing damage the cells and you're risking a cell vent as some people have found out the other problem is that you're down to such a level and you're drawing such a current that people work on pulse amps which don't exist for lithium ion cells basically they're a safety feature that manufacturers have to include for safety cutouts they're not something that's there for you to drop into if they were they would have a proper rating now if you look on a lithium polymer cell like you're using an RC car they do have two ratings they have a burst rating and they have a continuous rating and those ratings will be very high as well compared to a lithium ion cell it's it's a completely different power source so Having found the limitations of lithium iron cells and finding myself a bit disappointed with it all, I decided to build myself a box. And the idea was to demonstrate that it's extremely cheap and extremely easy to build a power source capable of running much lower than what people are running at the moment on mechs and do so safely and not risk venting cells all the things that we're seeing coming up at Vape Blast and various other places. It's just to try and make people more safe or to help people to be more safe. That was the motivation. Now the fact is, you are going to get a lot more power. I've, I've been running for a couple of weeks now at 200 watts. And that's not predicted wattage, that's measured wattage running the calculations and seeing what it works out at that's what I'm actually using and it's fun you know I enjoy it not everyone would not everyone should but if that's what you're after it's fine it gives me a day's run time out of one box don't need spare batteries and I'm not risking any vents the reason I keep stressing vents is yeah you can count to three or two and take a quick drag you might be alright you might be lucky but what happens if you drop it into a bag 
and it auto fires or you put it in your pocket and it auto fires you forget to lock it you're not using pulse amps then because you're not pulsing it you're on a sustained fire so you need that's why you need to stick to continuous current that way yeah you might run your cell completely flat and kill it that way but at least you're not risking breaking down the cell and causing it to go into thermal runaway now what I'm using is this box it's quite big I'll admit but I wanted to make sure that everything had fit it's dead simple one button it's just a MOSFET box like lots of people are building inside it it's got one LiPo pack now when you start looking into these LiPo packs they've got two ratings like I said they're called C ratings and basically what you do you take your milliamp hour of your battery you multiply it by your C rating and then you divide it by a thousand that gives you your amps that it's saying so this one has a C rating of 65 continuous and then it has a pulse rating of 130 C continuous. To do the calculations for you it's 350 amps continuous, 720 amps pulse. It's switched by a MOSFET that in best case scenario can do 343 amps. So even at the continuous current rating I'd be pushing the MOSFET in the event of a dead shot where you're going to draw as much as it can deliver you're more than twice what the MOSFET can take net result is it burns out the MOSFET it disconnects from the power supply safety I've screwed the MOSFET to the box I've done that for two reasons number one most of the time the box will help to dissipate the heat in the MOSFET so you get better performance you get more voltage to your coils, which is what any cloud chaser is really interested in. But the other thing is, in the event of a hard shot, you're going to build up current. It's fastened quite close to the to the atomizer. If you look on the top here, you can see the screw. So the MOSFET sits in between the 510 connector and that screw. It's right next to it. Again, I've done that for a reason. In the event of a shot, that heat will build up, and hopefully that's as close as I can get to the connector. So that's where the heat will be. That heat will warm up the MOSFET. The MOSFET won't be able to switch as much current. It's more likely to burn out quicker. Now what I'm finding when I'm actually running, doing the calculations on one of the builds, it was about 0 0.04. Now that's the total resistance for the circuit, not the build resistance. So that's all the wiring that's inside the test box that I was using. That's all the, the internal resistance of the battery. That's the resistance of the connector, the RDA and the coils. So it's very, very low. And it's still happily firing. They sag. Every single battery will sag under load. But what they won't do is sag as much as lithium ion cells. The nice thing is as well, it's still only 4.2 volt. It's two LiPo packs in parallel. So you can screw anything you want on. Don't want a drip? Stick a K-Fun on it. Run a K-Fun on. You'll find it will perform a bit better than on a Mac because the, the nature of them is they don't sag as much under load. So that's what I've been up to. I am going to do a write-up and I'm going to post a write-up up as well just so that people can see how easy it is I'll show you all the cock-ups I made when I built it, explain what I did wrong and why you should pay attention to drawings, which I didn't. Um, but I didn't burn anything out, I just had to fault find on it. It's not a problem, it's easy enough to do. Anyone who can solder can do it, and if you can't solder, soldering is not a difficult skill to learn. Watch a couple of videos on YouTube, ask someone who knows, I'm sure someone will teach you how to solder. So anyway, that's it. That's what I've been up to. And what it basically does, this is how I've been running it.
That's three strands of 0.5 cam full in parallel, dual coil. I don't know what the resistance is, don't bother checking. I just bell it out for shorts now and away I go. So there you go, that's what I've been up to. And we're live. And so as you can see, to uh, to your left, there's Mr. Graham Gords. Say hello, Mr. Graham Gords. Hello, Mr. Graham Gords. <laughs> so do you want to talk us through what we've just seen then? Yeah, uh, I believe you've just seen the video. I believe there's some photos coming through as well, which are photos of the build. Yes, uh, I'll, I'll play all, those in a minute. All those will be explained more fully once there's a, a link that you can have. <laughs> Because <laughs> the idea of this is that there's a build thread that you can follow at your leisure. Right. <clears throat> um, so you haven't actually done the build yet, the build, the build right up yet, have you? So no, once I've it's done, I will put that in the description of this this episode anyway. So if you want to refer back and find it, that'd be good. Um, so what I'm going to do then, I'll, sh I'll play the uh, the playlist of the uh, of the of the photos over the top, and you'll still be able to hear us. So uh, that's that's playing now. So um, what we're seeing here is basically. Uh, just some photos, uh, you know, the grams just put together, just just to illustrate the build process. So, do yeah, you want to, they, yeah, go on, carry on. Go on. No, that's fine. They're just, on. they're just pictures that I took during the build, uh, just illustrating what I did. So you'll see one picture where I'm holding a 510 connector upside down, and that's because I can't be bothered measuring, so I just spot things through. It's it's not rocket science <laughs> what we're doing. Um. You'll see one picture where the box is sat on its side and it's not very clear, but basically it's demonstrating the vent holes. That relates to some calculations Richard Pruin did on mech mods, where for a single 18650, he believes that you need four four millimeter holes hmm. um, to provide adequate venting. Um, so I've added six five millimeter holes just to be on the safe side. And I've got a loose magnetic door anyway, so I don't think I'll have any problem with that should events happen. No. It's not as if that battery's in a tight space, is it? No. It does need to be pointed out that LiPo's are quite vigorous when they choose to vent. Yes. Um, okay. Right, so the slideshow's now over. So I'll carry on. <laughs> yeah, you can find videos of LiPo vents on, on YouTube, but yeah. it has to be said that in general operation... You need to do something like pierce them to cause right. a vent. Yeah, I, I, I have uh, seen some videos myself. You know, I like to look at these sort of things every now and again to see what I'm dealing with. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Um, yes, yeah, quite energetic. I mean, I've used lipos for a lot longer than I've been vaping. I mm. use them in remote control planes and remote control cars. And to be fair, compared to what we're going to do with them. It doesn't compare the the abuse that you can deal to them with a remote control car, with motor start currents and stuff, mm. is entirely different. You've got different loads. A motor start is about six times its run current as it initially starts, and then it settles down. A vaping device, an atomizer, is an inductive load, so you turn it on, and that's what it takes, like your kettle. So it, it just builds up to you whatever current you pull in, and that's it. There's no peak. Um, so we, to me, it's a good power supply because it's meant to take a lot more abuse than we can physically dole out to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, as I said in the video, the whole idea of the box is that the weakest link is the connection from the battery to the atomizer. Um, the idea is that that fails should something catastrophic happen. Mm. Um, as I say, the, my main issue is I spend a lot of time on cloud chasing groups, despite the fact that I claim that I'm not a cloud chaser. Um, <laughs> and uh, they are fencing batteries. They are doing more than what they should be doing with mm. what they're using. Uh, and the idea is to demonstrate that Pretty much for the cost of setting up a clone mech mod, you can build a box mod with more power, more capability, longer run time, and it's safer. And yeah. uh, that video that everyone's just seen, I uploaded that to a few groups last night, and um, it's actually been favourable. I'm, I'm actually quite pleased. One group that I was hoping people would take it on 
nothing. Not interested. Really? Uh, but a lot of the other ones, very interested. Did, did I say why they weren't interested? They just didn't even comment. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, but it's not surprising. I, I, I don't know if there's just some sect of people out there who just, who just get a thrill out of pushing a battery as hard as they can, maybe. I think it's partially that and partially... I think if I'd got sponsorship from a Merivate mm. or something in that description and I was part of the in-crowd, maybe there'd be more. But yeah. they might have switched off a bit because I push a bit of advocacy there as well. Because the big groups with lots of members and they could help out with that side of things. Mm. It's a lot of voices that could be added. Um, but I think they've just switched off. They don't want to know. Oh, that's a shame. That really is. Uh, you know, you you would think that the, all the cloud chasing groups would 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 like to actually push it a little bit further, and uh, to my mind, that battery would. You know, taking out the whole thing about your battery need venting, ignore that for a minute. You, you can just output more with that battery. Well, that's what they can't grasp. Mm. Uh, they think that you know, I'm using the point zero five ohm build at 4.2 volts, therefore I'm getting 200 odd watts. They don't realise they're getting about 80. <laughs> um, or at least that's what I was getting when I did my tests and, and checked things out. I was very disappointed. Mm. When you looked at what you should get compared to what you do get. This, again, I'm getting a lot less than what I should do, but you're still getting a lot more. Yeah, I, that, that 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 is a topic that has been covered on this show before at length, isn't it? By yourself and uh, by, by previous guest uh, Goaty as yes. well. Yeah, uh, you know, we we've we've actually mentioned before that your theoretical output isn't your actual output in practice. No, you use the theoretical output to determine if what you're doing is safe. Yes, but you have to accept that batteries sag. Mm. Every battery sags. You know, yeah. there's a reason that. Things like the Tesla use thousands and thousands and thousands of 18650s mm. in a series parallel arrangement, and that's to counteract that. You know, uh, if, I, if I ever get to review a Tesla car, I'm going to see if it's got any venting holes anywhere. Um, it shouldn't need them. It has got them, but it shouldn't need them because it's got a lot more protection built in. Yeah, the sort of stuff. I wasn't use. being entirely serious. <laughs> But they were using A123 cells, and now they're going to Panasonic's. Oh, right. Um, A123 went bump, unfortunately, and they were good round cells, yeah. but lower voltage. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the first ad break, and when we come back, do you want to uh, just go through a couple of little components and stuff you've used? So now you've yes. got some there ready to show. Okay. So, uh, first ad break then, that'll only be three minutes or so, and uh, we'll be back in a moment, okay? Joytech UK are proud sponsors of VapeTrails.tv. Healthy Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquids. Proud sponsors of Vaping Entertainment on Vapor Trails TV.
RY4 Radio. UK are proud sponsors of VapeTrails.tv. Right. And we're back. Hello. Right, so uh, Mr. Gorge, you have some uh, some bits and bobs there? Yeah. Um Right, Pete asked in chat, I believe, about a MOSFET, and I yes. believe Leanna Lawless answered. But it's a metal oxide field, uh, field effect transistor, and they are tiny. I hold that up. Oh, yeah. It's about the size of your finger now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Now, what you've got is three pins. The best way to think of these is like a relay when you're putting spotlights on your car. It's mm -hmm. a a switch that allows you to switch very very high current with a very very small switch so <clears throat> what we've got is the gate the source of the as you're looking at it it's to your left sorry i'm working backwards mm -hmm. and in the middle is the drain they're the technical terms for it right for us the connection on the right is going to be, go to your switch that's fed from the positive side of your battery source, whatever it is, being an 18650 or a LiPo or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's going to go from your positive and that goes through your switch. So you'll take a positive off your 510 to your switch and then to that. Yeah. Your negative is what's switched on these. You don't switch the positive if you switch the negative. Positive is soldered straight to the uh, 510 connector. Mm -hmm. So you'll wire your negative from your battery to the left hand connection on the outside I'm trying to hop in my knife over there and then your centre connection is going to connect to the negative of your 510 or the outside rather than the centre of it you'll then put a resistor between the two outside legs what that resistor does is pulls it closed mm -hmm. if you don't fit that resistor what happens is you press your switch and it fires till you unscrew the atomizer basically I found that out by not realising where it needed to go. <laughs> um, and that's it. It's dead simple. It really is dead simple. If I can manage to get this in shot, you can see everything in here in a box that's been built for someone. Right. It's a bit too dark. But everything's contained down here at the bottom end. MOSFET screwed to the base of the, the box. It just needs removing for some thermal paste. Um, it's a self-contained unit. The only important thing you need to bear in mind if you're building one is do have all the drills you need for your switches. If it says it's a 16 millimeter switch, you need a 16 millimeter drill or a 5 8 drill or yeah. a hole saw, as you saw in the pictures. Uh, other than that, it's dead straightforward. Drill the oh, holes where they need to be. That's, that's one of the problems I encountered with when I built my mod. I, I didn't quite have the drill bits of the right size, so I was drilling smaller and then filing it out. That was very labour yeah. intensive. Yeah, it is. It's much easier if you've got the right bits for the yeah. job. Yeah. Um, the hole saw is quite expensive for the sake of drilling one hole. Um, <laughs> you can get 5 8 drills that are turned down to go in a battery drill. Um, so that's something to maybe look at. Oh, fine. Use a micro switch instead. Robert Stealthfate, who provided most of the bits mm. for these boxes, some were bought and some were provided for test purposes. Yeah. Um, he's got everything that you need there, other than the 350 amp MOSFETs that I use. Mm. Uh, it does have 40 amp MOSFETs, so if you just want to build a 
a lithium iron box with a battery sled. You can buy everything from Rob within the box, I think. You reckon Unless he's going to be selling them soon? Because I know MOSFETs are taking off quite big in the uh, in Boxman circles. He's looking at it and he's big into this project. He, right. He's as on board as, as you are yourself. He yeah, likes okay. the idea of molten battery safety. Hmm. Um, so he's waiting for me to give him a shopping list. Right. Uh, and the idea is, I don't know if anyone's seen, but he's doing DNA Farter yeah, or I mean, DNA based boxes. Yeah. I mean, in fact, I bought my DNA 40 boards from him. Yeah, he is a DNA supplier, but he's mm. he's bought in like Hannah style boxes, um, and he's doing the boards and stuff. So he could, well, they put a post up on Facebook today, and it costs out. If you use a DNA twenty five, it's about fifty quid to build a box. Yeah. If you use a DNA forty, it's, it's about seventy quid. And if yeah. you want to upgrade the switches to the nicer micro switches that he has in stock, add six quid to the cost. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, that's about about seventy quid's what it cost to build my my mod that I did over Christmas, you know. So that's not bad. Yeah, yeah. it's it's very good, and I like the way that things are going. I like this idea of giving people something to do as a bit of a hobby. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean? it's a, a nice it's a nice extension of mech mods and RBAs and everything else. The mm. next logical step is put something together yourself. Well, that's the that's thing, is it? Yeah, it's very very satisfying to actually. I mean, uh, I, I I've not stopped vaping this since since I built it. It is my go to mod simply because I built it. If I bought this, I probably wouldn't be that worried about it. But I made it myself, so you know, it's got that extra special bit, you know. Yeah. Thing to uh, it, you know? I agree. I I know exactly where you're coming from. Um, I'm the same with my epoxies. They really suit me because I've, I've tailored them to suit myself. Mm. And it yeah. is. It is a nice, it's a nice thing to do, and not, it's intimidating. You'll procrast procrastinate about it, but it's not actually that difficult to do, is no, it? Not really. I mean, and the cost of entry is is what pretty much the same as buying a fairly decent clone and a fairly decent clone atomizer. Well, the detonator mini. Hmm. I worked out that if you can order the box and the MOSFETs from RS3 work or something like that. Um, you can build the box with, with the with a light pole for thirty five quid, that ain't and bad, you can is get it? A char get a charger for between fifteen and thirty. Personally, right. I'd go for the thirty pounds one. Right. But if you were starting from scratch with a mech mod, you'd have to buy two eighteen six fifties at least, yep. the tube, and a charger. Yes. So the cost is the same as a mech mod, hmm. really. I mean, what are you looking at for a semi-decent charger? 20, 25 quid? You can get an IMAX B6AC, which means you don't need a power supply or anything. You just buy it and plug it into the wall. Right. And that will do balance charging. It'll do cell analysis. Um, you don't need to balance charge 4.2 volt packs because they're in parallel. They self-balance. Right. Um, but 28 quid for a genuine one, 15 quid for a clone but I would recommend that you read up on the clones before you rush out and buy one <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, well, we, we, we've got a question from chat here from uh, from Trev uh, he wants to know what the MOSFET model number is yes <laughs> <laughs> I'll add that I don't have it written down okay. um, Mod Maker does actually sell them Right. Uh, I think it's I, it's something like I, IRL uh, 3964 or something like that but mm. Modmaker sells them for about three pounds fifty. Oh, that's if not I too bad. Correctly. That's not too bad. Um, they work out a bit cheaper from RS, but you do have to buy two, so you'll have to build two mo two, two box mods to justify it. Isn't there the last time I ordered from RS, which is quite some time ago? Isn't there a minimum order price as well? You you got to spend at least a certain amount of money. There is that is a possibility. I order my stuff through work, so we just yeah. I seem to remember that being being the case when I last that, ordered from RS. That's why I said, if you have the option to order three work, just mm. find the part numbers. I, I will give all the part numbers for stuff I've used. Uh, uh, the idea is to make this as easy for people as possible. Yeah. Um, but if you can order three work, just give them the part numbers, and when they put an order in, shove your bits on it, it'll come to about a tenner, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I, might, I might have a crack at this build myself, to be honest, once you've done a write-up. So, uh, yeah, it's all good stuff. Right, um, have you got anything else to add, or shall we uh, 
Yeah, well, as I say, the beauty of it is, yes, it can do really stupid power. You can... Mm -hmm. I can't think of a build that I can put on it that it won't fire. Yeah. But you could also similarly screw a K fun or a Genesis on it at 1.2 ohms and just enjoy massive run time. Mm. It's it's more capacity than a dual 18650 box. Yeah. And because it doesn't sag um, and recovers better, mm. you get a lot more run time out of out of the box. So that is the beauty of this. Where With me other box builds, you're really tied to an RDA where you can fit the coils in and get the resistance up. But with this, it's 4.2 volt. It's the same rules as any mech mod. Just yeah, you'll, okay. you'll always find, because it doesn't sag quite as much, if you're used to a 1 ohm build, Build on a K fun, you might want to build at 1.2 ohms instead mm. to use this, or just enjoy the fact that you get a little bit more out of it. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm looking forward to uh, when you post your write up because I, I I do think I'm going to have a crack at this. Uh, I've got a suspicion Gary Dibley might have a go as well. Yeah, I'd say it's right on Gary Dibley Street. Oh, it certainly is. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure he'd be quite interested in it. I don't think he's in chat tonight, but uh, I'm sure he'll get to see this at some point. Well, touch wood, I'll have the right up by weekend. Ah, oh, superb. Right. Uh, and I will be spreading spreading that about wherever I can, so there's a good chance people will see it one way or the other. Yeah. Well, like I said, I'll, I'll add it to the description of this video when it's when it's done. So, uh, you know, if you if, if you don't come across it, pop back to this video in a week or so's time and you'll see it on the description there. Okay, then. So, um, all right. What we're doing yeah. now, we're, yeah, are, 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 you, are you done? Or is it anything else? I'll let you do your review. All right, Stop okay then. <laughs> Righto, so uh, I'll take the adverts again now, and uh, when we come back, I've, I've got a review for you guys. So uh, if we can say goodbye to uh, Graham Gords. Right, uh -huh. I'll see you all in chat in a minute. Hi, right, I'll see you in there. Righto, cheers. All right, see you in a bit. All right, see you later. <laughs> okay, tell that. Joytech UK are proud sponsors of VapeTrails.tv. Often imitated, never duplicated. Award winning service and products from Cloud9Vaping.co.uk. Vapors, Dripper just got 40% bigger. So if you love discovering new e-liquids, tell Dripper what flavors you like and we'll send you 70 ml of juice and at least five flavors. With a money back guarantee and free delivery anywhere in Europe, dripper.co.uk. What's in this e-cig cloud? Harmless water vapor, right? 
Pretty much, yes. Compared to a lit cigarette, it's much safer than smoke. But it contains nicotine. And nicotine on its own isn't toxic and doesn't cause cancer. If you're worried about switching to vapour, here are some facts. No tar, no smoke, no burnt tobacco. Cooking your evening meal produces more toxins than are found in exhaled vapour. Tobacco smoke contains toxins at very high levels, and vapour does not. And that vapour contains 6,000 times less carcinogens than cigarette smoke. Electronic cigarette vapour. There's nothing to be frightened of. The only dangerous electronic cigarette is a banned one. Sponsors for Vape Betrayals. been a bit of a long time coming i released a, tw a teaser for this on twitter a while ago but uh the smock x pro m80 i have finally decided to bring up my review of this so um without any further ado let's uh let's crack on with it because it's about 20 minutes long and we're running out of time so uh cinema okay so here we have the uh the smock m80 x pro plus or the smock x pro m80 plus whichever way around okay right so um, let's have a quick tour of the device uh, what we got here we've got a, a spring-loaded 510 connector I'll just show you that there we are you can see I can push that in it has got a, a flathead screw on it as well and you can twist it ever so slightly but not very much so I'm guessing that's not really that adjustable um, you've got four allen keys on here uh, four allen screws on the top on the bottom you've got a micro USB port for your charging You've got some battery vent holes there, and again, four Allen key screws on the bottom. Now, this is not designed to have usable, user replaceable batteries, and there's something stuck in there. I don't know what that is. I won't worry about that. I think it's a bit of tissue or something. Just there, look, see. Um, it's not designed to have the batteries user replaceable, but it does contain two 18650s, I believe, and according to the blurb, they are lithium polymer. Uh, I've not had this thing apart, but by all accounts, they actually are soldered in. So if you were to replace these, you'll need to get your soldering iron out. Um, but, you know, that's it, that's what it is. It's designed not to be user-replaceable. User okay, here is the the control business end of it. Let's get this right way up for you lot. So you can see there, this has your, your basic interface. You've got the fire button here. You've got a plus and minus here, and you've got a reset uh, switch there. Presumably, if the um, the device crashes in any way, shape, or form, it does have another function, and that is you need to use the reset switch in conjunction with the uh, the power switch in order to update your firmware. Um, now, if I was to tap the reset switch here, I don't think this is this going to fit in there. That's not that's not quite pointy enough. Let's get a smaller one. There we are. Tap the reset switch, and you can see mine says X Pro V Treble Zero Five. Now, when I initially had this, that said X Pro V Treble Zero Four, and that was one of the ones with the problem firmware. Now, the problem with the firmware was that in temperature control mode, it would take somewhere in the region of five to seven seconds in order to actually fire your coil, regardless if your coil was a was a nickel build or a canonical build or a nichrome build. It would still take that length of time to fire it. All versions of the M80 Plus released, certainly after this video goes out, will have the uh, the correct firmware on it. Um, if you do need to update your firmware, well, 
when you get your if, if you if you did decide to buy one of these just tap the reset switch it will tell you the version if it is version 4 pop over to the smock website and you can get instructions on how to actually do the update and they provide a little video and show you how to do it so i won't really go into detail here on that anyway so this is currently in variable wattage mode and uh, as you can see if i press the up and it does start to scroll pretty quick it will reach 80 watts and it will go down. It does not round robin, by the way, so you, you've, you've got to go one way or the other. You can't loop round. It will go down to six. Okay. So, as you can see, I've been using this at 25 watts. There we are. Um, right. You've got a five click on and off function, so let's do that now. So, that's now locked. It's not off it's locked so that's locked now it's locked you can actually see that there's a there's a date and time yeah pointless but there we go it is what it is as they say okay so if I press the fire button three times in quick succession you actually get into the menu so and I can scroll through so what we got then it's pretty quick this so uh, one is the mode you want it in so being that temperature, wattage, or mechanical mode. Two is your puff counter limit thing. I've never been bothered with that. Three is to set the time. Uh, four is your temperature limitation there. You see that? And five. Oh, right. One, two, three. And option number five is to turn it off or on. Power on, power off. There we go. So it says goodbye in a nice smiley face, and if I press the fire button, nothing will happen unless I press the fire button five times, and it turns on. So there we go. So that's that. So <clears throat> I've been using this mostly in variable wattage mode. I have, of course, tested it in the mechanical mode and in the uh, in the temperature control mode. Now, mechanical mode, I'm not going to go into too detail here, too much detail here, but basically, what it does, you put it in mechanical mode, and it will give the power that's in the battery to your coil that's that it's like behaves like a mechanical mo uh, mod um actually while we're on that subject the range of ohmage that this will fire ranges from 0 0.1 ohms to 3.0 ohms i believe is the spec i've not bothered to try anything with three ohm coil on it i don't have a three ohm coil or anything and i frankly you'd be wasting my time actually building one so uh there we go. I've, I've, I've not had any problems with that. Uh, it has fired anything I've put on it. Um, as long as it has been within that spec. So. Yeah. That's that's that's, that's encroach on the temperature control mode, shall we? Because we need to get this out of the way. So let's put it into version th uh, three clicks for the menu. And in there. And I want it in temp mode. Bink, there it is. Now that's switched over, and it looks very similar to the, the DNA 40 screen. Um, here is the DNA 40 screen, just for comparison. It's also 25 watts, and, and funny enough, 520 Fahrenheit. As a point, actually, this only measures in Fahrenheit. It doesn't have a Celsius mode like the later revisions of the DNA 40. Um, but as you're soon going to see, this doesn't really matter anyway. Right, what we've got here then. Let's move this out of the way. I've got here a nickel coil. It's not built in with any 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 intention to vape it. It's here for demonstration purposes only. So this is a refresher. Then I'm going to pop this onto DNA 40, okay? Because we know what should happen. But if you don't know, as I say, it's a little refresher. So it's 420 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm going to fire the coil. And you can just about see both of those on your screen. And it comes up temperature protected. And as you can see there, the coil, well, it appears to do absolutely nothing. Okay? So that's fine. That's what we expect. And if I was to put some cotton in here, and I'm not going to do that, because you know what happens if I put cotton into a DNA 40. It doesn't burn. So long as you've got the temperature low enough. Okay? So, yeah. The DNA 40. And before anyone claims shenanigans on me, I'm keeping that in sight. Let's just pop this on the uh, on the X Pro. Get 
uh, nice and tight in there. Like I say, these coils, and you can see they're not the best, but they're not designed to be vaped on, okay? They're, I've just thrown this build on here just in order to demonstrate this. That's all it's for. So, as we saw previously, we're in temperature mode, and it is on 420 degrees Fahrenheit. And you know what? I didn't make a note of the reading that was on the DNA 40, but... 2.3, uh, sorry, 0 0.23 ohms it comes out of here. And keep in mind this is in temperature mode. Um, right, when I fire this, see what happens. It does not cut out, and that thinks that's at 354 degrees Fahrenheit. But it is limiting the wattage. Did you see that? I've set it at 25. But it's limiting the oh now it's going up. Now it's going down. It's it's weird. Right, and that's starting to warp my coil now, so God knows what I was gonna read. 0 0.84 now. Right. Let's crank this up. Sorry, my camera's having a hard time keeping focus here. I'm gonna put this to 40 because the DNA 40 can't go above that, so I want to keep this fair. Okay, so let's fire it again. And it glows, okay? Now when I'm firing, it is limiting the wattage. It's not actually reaching 40, uh, 40 watts. So it's reaching 32 there, and at 420 degrees Fahrenheit. Now if I were to increase the temperature, uh, temp setting, let's put this to 500. Okay. And fire now. It is pretty much hitting 40 watts. And it just tail off there a little bit. And you can see just the glow on my fingers there, can't you? Look, it is... That is giving it a right number, that is. Okay, so... I'm going to talk a bit... A bit more about this in detail in a minute when we actually see me vaping on this. Um, we know what we should expect when we put this on a DNA 40. Now this is a hot coil now at some point so it's not going to play that well on a DNA 40 but we're going to do it anyway. Okay. You know for best results you should always put your coils on cold. But there we go and it has warped a bit so God knows what it's going to read now. Uh, is it a new? I'm going to say it's the same coil because it is, even though it's not. So 0.27 there. So that's bring up the uh, first. Bring up the wattage to 40, and it cuts out pretty much straight away. But again, you're not seeing any glowing here. Okay. If I were to increase the temperature to 500, like we had it set on the smock, and this is going to keep flashing that now. Right, so let's bring that into. Right, so 500. Okay. And it cuts out, but again, we're not seeing any glowing whatsoever. So, yeah, with all that said and done, let's keep the DNA 40 out of the equation now. Because you know we've done what we need to do on it. Let's uh, let's get some vape time with this thing, shall we? Right. So here we go then. The Smok M80 Plus. Uh, currently, I've got a Spiral Atlantis on top, and I'm a bit thirsty, so I need to have a quick swig. Oh. Right. <clears throat> so then, primarily in the close-up section, we covered the, uh, the temperature control mode. Now. I mean, no doubt I might have upset a few people here, but um, frankly, simply put, the temperature control mode doesn't really do anything. Not really. What it seems to do is, and I have tested it with a lot of... This is why this video has taken a long time to come out, and I've actually reshot this video several times now. I'm a, I, I, you know, I'm not ashamed to admit it, because I wanted to get this as close to, as, as accurate in my 
my my view that I can. Um, now, basically, what I can determine it's doing, and Smock have released no information about this at all. But from what I can determine, is you put a coil on there, and it measures the resistance, and then you put in the target temperature you want. So you want 500 degrees Fahrenheit, you want 420 degrees Fahrenheit, you want 600 degrees Fahrenheit, and it will fire that coil in what it thinks is the amount of power that it should give it in order to reach that temperature. But it doesn't constantly monitor the temp uh, the resistance of that coil and adjust as necessary. That, that's how the DNA 40 works, basically, right? It, it goes, right, the temperature is on, on it works on a nickel core because it can predict that and it knows roughly how much temperature is going in um to increase the resistance that sort of thing it, it knows how it reacts okay so it's constantly monitoring and it will go it, it adjust the power as needed and if it gets too hot it will just shut it off now the m80 does not no way does not do that at all um basically it goes right i've got a a 0.2 ohm coil here I'm going to and the user wants it at 500 degrees Fahrenheit and he wants to fire it at 40 watts I'm going to supply this amount of voltage in order to reach this amount of wattage and then that's it end of it uh, you can keep firing and firing and firing it doesn't make any difference at all so basically um, the, the temperature control on this is very flawed however having said that and I need another vape again This thing cost me 45 quid. Right? 45 quid. And for 45 pounds, what I've purchased is a fairly compact mod. It's not particularly heavy. It's not particularly big. It's a decent size. It's 22 mil across here. So any 22 mil atomizer is going to fit on here quite nicely. Um, what I've purchased for my 45 pounds, plus PMP of course, is a decent sized mod with a good battery life that will fire pretty much any coil I put on it, be it a nickel coil, be it a canful coil, be it a nichrome coil, up to 80 watts. Okay? So this is how I'm choosing to look at it. I'm choosing to ignore the temperature control function of it and think of it as, you know, on the same sort of level of as the iStick or the... Uh, the IPV version 2, that sort of level, okay? So I'm thinking of an inexpensive box mod, which is easy to charge because you don't have to take the batteries out, which is a negative in some people's views, of course. Um, but an easy to charge mod, um, easy to maintain, easy to operate device that, as I said, excellent battery life. I mean, I can get two or three days out of the battery easily with this. That will fire. Now this is currently set at 40 watts on a uh, on a stock um, Atlantis coil and it's 0 0.54 ohms reading on this. At 40 watts. I can if I choose, in, you know, and I do choose in fact, to actually increase that wattage and I'm going to put it to 50. No problem. 80 watts you cry. Okay. 80. There we are. So, any avoidance of doubt? 80 watts. No problem at all. And plenty of the vapour. So, here we go then. To sum up, if you're looking for a device that's got temperature control, at this moment in time, I would say go for a DNA 40 based device. If you're looking for a mod that's inexpensive, will provide a decent range of uh, wattage, will provide a, a compatibility of a decent range of of, uh, of coils. You know, you need look no further to be honest. Yes, the uh, the fact that you can't remove the batteries will be a negative for some, but to my mind, it's 45 quid. The batteries in this are going to last a couple of years probably. By the time the batteries are dead on this, this thing's going to be sitting around doing nothing. Um, you know, I'll have moved on to something else, as I always do. And that's probably true of most vapors, to be honest. Um, you know. I can't give you a full rundown of the numbers because I don't have the equipment to test the numbers that it's actually outputting. All I can say is anecdotal. Um, 
it appears to be firing at whatever wattage I put it to, and up to, you know, up to a certain level of, of the various devices I have, I, I can compare, and um, it seems to be putting out pretty much on par with them. So, yeah, for what it is, it's a box mod and Smock have added the temperature control function in, which doesn't really work. So ignore that and buy it on the strength of it being a variable wattage device. That is about all I can really advise on. So there we go. Cheers. So there we have it. That was the uh, the M80 Pro X thingy-majig. Um, now, as I did mention in that video there, I, I've taken a few attempts at reviewing this and each time I've done it, I've never been entirely happy with the result, I've got to be honest. Uh, it was a tricky one to review, simply because I wanted to really make sure I got a handle on how the DNA, f no, sorry, on how the, uh, the temperature control worked or didn't work. Um, you know, I wanted to be sure I wasn't missing something. I don't think I am, to be honest. Um, so the way to really look at this is not as a temperature control mod at all. And uh, I've just realised that the uh, dripper I put on here is leaking to buggery. But as a variable wattage mod, it performs perfectly well. I've got this set at 60, uh, 60 watts at the minute um, on a 0 0.77 ohm coil. At least that's what it's reading. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's fine. No issues at all. Um, but they shouldn't have released it with a temporary control function at all. They should just just left it out. I don't think any number of firmware updates is actually going to fix that issue. I just don't think the chip's really got that capability in it at all. So, um, you know, that's that's my tuppenies worth on it, really, I'm afraid. But uh, I can see chat did pick up on this one quite a bit. Um, Lamental points out battery lifespan will be to a point determined by how you use it. Can't see it lasting two years of aping at 80 watts. Well, this is the thing. Now, Smock actually claimed this is a LiPo bat or two LiPo 18650 batteries in here. I've not had it apart, so I've not been able to verify that. Um, but if they do claim that, it shouldn't really be that much of an issue. They should be able to handle it. And that may in part go to explain why I'm getting... I am getting an excellent battery life. Sorry, I just realised I'm sinking down to the, the bottom of your screen there. My apologies. That may be in part some reason why I'm getting some very good battery life from this. Uh, you know, I've been vaping this at 60 watts for a good couple of days. And, uh, you, know, the, the, you know, the battery's not doing too bad. So, yeah, like I said in the video, if, if you're looking for a reasonably priced variable wattage mod, that's fine. Um, but if you're looking for a temperature control mod, you still need to be looking at a DNA 40 at the moment. Um, I think the real contender is going to be when uh, Yeehee released their, their SX chip with with uh, temperature control. But until that, that happens, I don't really think that's on the cards. So, uh, hmm. Let's have a quick look at chat. Yep, and Tim Long has got one of the Chinese temperature control clones. And uh, like Dave Dawn demonstrated on the Haze Hour, it didn't actually burn the cotton. So they do work. It, there are clones out there. And um, yeah, that's fine. As to where I got it, Whip It Up 69, I'll put that in chat after the show, okay? I, I don't really want to say on air where I got it from. They don't have it in stock at the moment anyway. So... Um, You know, and, and until the next batch comes out, I'm not entirely sure I would, would, would want to recommend it. I, I don't know. But, um, yeah, so there we go. Anyway, I think it's time to wrap up now. It's uh, 21.59 by my clock, so, uh, you know, we can close the time. So tomorrow night, then, isn't uh, the haze hour. As, uh, DD has got a very extensive appointment with, uh, with Vic. So uh, tomorrow night, there will be a show. But um, that is to be disclosed on the night. Uh, Sunday, there will be no uh, Dave's Tackle Box. He's taking a well-deserved break at the moment in time. 
uh, spending some quality time with his family and uh, catching up on things he needs to do. Uh, so that leaves us Monday then with uh, drips and tips with uh, Mr. Andy Abrook and Mina Malik, oh, Davy Malik. Uh, Tuesday will be, of course, uh, Vapor Scene with Marco and uh, Gary. And then back around to me on the Wednesday, you lucky, lucky people. And not forgetting all your vaping entertainment every night on RY4. And I believe on Saturday as well, thinking about it, Shenanigans is on as well. So, um, yeah, there we go. Um, right. <sighs> I think it's time to say goodbye, he says. Trying to queue things up. Uh, before I do, let's have a quick vape, shall we? Oh, and before I do go, um, changes are for the Vapor Trails, of course. You may have seen the Recruitment Drive adverts. So if you are interested in joining the team, do get in touch. Anyway, until next week, I'll, uh, I'll see you. Joytech UK are proud sponsors of VaporTrails.tv.